Greetings, dear viewers. Here I am in uh, University College Oxford Chapel, and here's a memorial to uh, William Jones. So William Jones is memorialised here because he was an undergraduate at this college. He was born in London in 1746 to Welsh parents. He grew up bilingual in Welsh and English. He went to Harrow School, which is one of the most distinguished schools in the realm. Within a year, the headmaster said, this boy knows more Greek than me, because Latin and ancient Greek were the mainstay of the curriculum in that time. He then came up to Oxford, where he's best known as a linguist, and he mastered both Persian and Arabic. There happened to be a, a Syrian who was living in Oxford at the time, and Jones uh, learned from him. Uh, he then um, decided to be called to the bar. So he was a barrister, and his practice soon flourished. Um, he was a man of advanced opinions, though he um, helped to uh, draft a, a critique of the American Revolution, um, despite being in some respects privately sympathetic to its objectives. He was a, an itinerant judge in Wales for a while. It helped because a lot of the people were giving their testimony in Welsh, and English judges usually couldn't comprehend what they were saying. They might rely on um, interpreters who were not always trustworthy. Anyway, Jones was then appointed to the bench in India, so he sailed out um, to India. Um, the East India Company was ruling much of India at the time. The Mughal Empire was still extant. This was um, the 1780s. And uh, the British only controlled quite a small proportion of India at the time, some of the coastal areas. So Calcutta was the capital of India for the Honourable East India Company. They didn't control much of the interior. Anyway, he soon mastered Sanskrit, which is the ancient uh, Indian language and he looked back to uh, the ancient uh, Hindu codes of law because uh, he uh, could read uh, Arabic. He was able to read the Holy Quran. And as the memorial says, he formed a digest of Hindu and Mohammedan laws. Mohammedan is how you say Muslim. You see the tigers down below. So here he is. Is he teaching or learning? There's a fascinating YouTube video where an Indian scholar is discussing this. Uh, and you can see the um, uh, palm fronds behind him. And are these men Brahmins? I, I think they are. But he's got a chair, they haven't. Although in India, sitting on the floor was quite a common thing. It didn't necessarily imply a low, lower status. The inscription here is all in Latin, because of course in the 18th century, Latin was the bulk of the curriculum. And all exams at Oxford at that time were spoken in Latin, no matter what subject they were in. So only gradually through the 19th century, Oxford switched over more and more to English. To gain admission to Oxford University, for any subject until the 1960s, one had to pass O-level Latin, which was demanding. And for many subjects, such as say history, even until the 80s, people had to pass O-level Latin. Um, so there we are. You can see the walking stick of Aesculapius up high with the two snakes entwined around it. Not sure what that's got to do with it. The sitar and so on. And is that a large um, fruit he's got as well? So he's a controversial figure. Um, some Indians feel that he was a legal imperialist, that he wasn't sufficiently respectful of their legal tradition. Um, others would, would dispute that. So he was a super polyglot. He is said to have had the command of up to 20 languages. And then he died in 1794, the relatively young age of 48. Despite that, he is recognized as having been an intellectual supernova. Um, so, uh, renowned as a jurist, uh, very distinguished as a linguist, certainly a polymath. That is Sir William Jones, perhaps one of Univ's finest sons.